Good evening. It's been seven days since President Trump and Vladimir Putin sat down together behind closed doors at the summit in Helsinki. Seven days, and the White House still will not give a detailed account of what went on between them, what was said, what was decided. And now the president seems to be eagerly trying to do his best to change the subject, tweeting dire threats in all caps at Iran, trying to gaslight the public yet again about the FBI surveillance warrants that four Republican-nominated judges approved targeting Carter Page, a former foreign policy advisor to the campaign, suspected of being a Russian agent. The president also launched a new attack on a newspaper he hates. None of these, though, are new tricks of Mr. Trump's trade. But today, there was a new attempt at diversion and a new novel way of attacking his highly credentialed critics, all former officials in law enforcement, national security, or the intelligence community. Now he wants to punish them for speaking out by stripping them of their security clearances. It began with Republican Senator Rand Paul lobbying the president to do it to former CIA Director John Brennan, who's become a vocal critic of the president. So Rand Paul may have started the idea, but by the time today's White House press briefing was over, the list also included former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper, former FBI Director James Comey, former National Security Advisor Susan Rice, former Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe, and former CIA and National Security Agency Director Michael Hayden. Comey and McCabe no longer have clearances, but that small, important detail didn't stop the White House from attacking them. In any case, here's what the White House said about it at all. When you have the highest level of security clearance, when you're the person that holds the nation's deepest, uh, most sacred secrets at your hands, and you go out and you make false accusations against the president of the United States, he thinks that is a, uh, something to be very concerned with. <laughs> Keep it honest, for an administration that makes false and misleading statements about people all the time, and for a president who's been documented as uttering falsehoods at the rate of several per day, that's a little rich by, by itself. But, but wait, she went on. There's more. The president is exploring these mechanisms to resu uh, remove security clearance because they've politicized and in some cases actually monetized their public service and their security clearances and making baseless accusations of improper contact with Russia or being influenced by Russia against the president is extremely inappropriate. So politicizing and monetizing their public service and security clearances, pot, meat, kettle. Though it's hard to point to a specific instance in which the president has openly traded on specific intelligence that only he is privy to, he certainly has, at almost every juncture possible, sought to politicize the business of intelligence gathering or co opt it. Here's his first big appearance as president. The military uh, gave us tremendous percentages of votes. We were unbelievably successful in the election with getting the vote of the military. And probably almost everybody in this room voted for me, but I will not ask you to raise your hands if you did. <laughs> but I would guarantee a big portion, because we're all on the same wavelength, folks. We're all on the same wavelength. Well, the stars on the wall you see behind him mark each member of the CIA killed in service to the country. Or maybe it's just a campaign backdrop. You can decide for yourselves. It, it, that may seem normal now, but at the time, it shocked a lot of people. I mean, until then, a president had never actually treated career intelligence officers who were trained to stay away from partisan politics as either partisan or political. But this president has shown again and again that he does see members of the intelligence community this way, that he does consider them political operators and rivals. By her latest count, the president has spoken in political and non-flattering terms about intelligence or members of the intelligence community at least 262 times on Twitter since launching his presidential run. And we found those only after looking for a couple hours this afternoon. But again, Politicizing intelligence, that's one thing. It's bad, except that it's when it's members of his campaign and later his administration. Then it seems for the president it's okay. For instance, here's former Defense Intelligence Agency Director Michael Flynn on the campaign trail, and no, 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 nothing political here at all. Lock her up. That's right. Yes, that's right. Lock her up. I'm going to tell you what, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. No doubt when he said that, some people uh, took his words more seriously because after all, as a former intelligence official, he must know things that, that they don't. No problem trading on that politically, nor 
Apparently, does the president have a problem with using the likes of House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes for all kinds of shenanigans to try to manipulate the Russian investigation? We'll have more on Nunes shortly as yet another claim of his collides with the facts. But right now, CNN national security analyst James Clapper. And given the partisan attacks on him, I, I just want to take a moment and walk you through his ample nonpartisan resume. He served as director of national intelligence during the Obama administration. Before that, as director of the Defense Intelligence Agency under the first President Bush and Bill Clinton. General Clapper joined the Air Force in 1963, served two tours of combat during the Vietnam War, is the recipient of an Air Force Distinguished Service Medal, two Defense Distinguished Service Medals, and three Distinguished Service Medals for national intelligence. More recently, General Clapper is the author of Facts and Fears, Hard Truths from a Life in Intelligence. He joins us now by phone. So, General Director Clapper, I, I, you actually learned about this, I understand, in real time while you were watching the White House briefing today about them trying to take away a security clearance from you. I'm wondering what went through your mind when you heard that. And now that you've had some time to digest it, where are you at with all of this? Well, uh, yeah, that's how I, I learned about it, just like everybody else. Uh, I had no prior uh, official notification that uh, uh, my uh, clearance was uh, under consideration for revocation. Uh, so it was uh, uh, quite amazing. I didn't know what to make of it uh, at first and uh, was uh, a bit speechless, to, to tell you the truth. I, I think after having reflected on it, uh, to me, uh, I think this is a real abuse of, of the clearance system uh, just to use it to attack uh, political opponents or people that have been critical of, uh, of the president. And you know, is that now going to become a criterion for attaining a clearance uh, anywhere in the government? Uh, is a pledge of fealty or loyalty to President Trump? And so, and of course, it has uh, all kinds of uh, First Amendment implications, uh, which are, are deeply disturbing. Th that's the kind of concern or ripple effect something like this might actually have. That's the message it sends, that if you speak out against the president, you're, you can have your security clearance removed. If you toe the line, if you're Devin Nunes uh, hustling the White House in the middle of the night, um, then, then you're okay. Well, or what else might uh, the president decide uh, we're not entitled to? Uh, retirement pay, medical benefits, uh, where, where does this stop? Uh, just as a way of, uh, again, retaliating against uh, political opponents. And, uh, you know, I, I won't get, go into all the ironies here, uh, Anderson. You know, I think you covered that pretty well um, in your opening. C CNN is reporting that the president is actually pleased with how all of this is playing out and that it's a new way for him to make the deep state argument, which the president believes fires up his base. It probably, he thinks, distracts from the, the, the deafening silence on what actually happened in that closed-door meeting with Vladimir Putin seven days ago, which we still don't know about. Um, the irony of all this is that the White House is accusing you of politicizing intelligence when, in fact, I mean, as we talked about, you know, this president seems to have no problem politicizing it when it's to his ends. Well, exactly. And that, that's that's uh, one of the many implications here that, uh, as you alluded, uh, all kinds of ironies here. Uh, I mean, this is a classic uh, do as I say, not as I uh, not as I do. You know, last week, after many contortions, the president finally said that, that Russia did meddle in the 2016 election. But then, you know, first, then he initially when he read the statement, he ad libbed, and then, you know, that it well, could have been other people. There are a lot of people out there. Then he did basically come out and say it. Fast forward to yesterday, he tweeted that Russian interference is, quote, all a big hoax, which then Sarah Sanders tried to clean up today by saying, well, he's only referring to the claims of collusion. Do you buy that? I mean, he said this time and time and time again. Well, I think, you know, probably a lot of people are getting, I am certainly a case, a bad case of whiplash on trying to, to uh, figure out the uh, statements, the backpedaling, and then the corrections. It's very, very confusing. And, and the issue, I guess, is when it comes down to it, uh, the president cannot accept uh, the fact that there was Russian, Russian, there was meddling by the Russians and that that causes questions to be raised about the legitimacy of his election. And when we first briefed him about our findings about Russian meddling in early January of 2017, that was kind of his reaction, and he hasn't changed since. So he, has, he really has a, a, a schizophrenic reaction here. And I think the other problem is uh, uh, inflating 
um, med- the Russian meddling with collusion, and they're really uh, two different things. Right. The Russian meddling is a profound threat to this country, and it is really disturbing when the commander in chief won't consistently recognize it. Yeah, uh, the idea that the White House—I mean, how much cleanup have they had to do in the last seven days? When only if if only we knew what he had actually talked about one-on-one with Vladimir Putin, who knows how much of that would have to be cleared up or cleaned up by the White House, but we can't, there is no cleaning up because nobody knows what was talked about. Uh, Director uh, Clapper, thank you as always. Appreciate talking to you.